So in the kit, you'll get a pack of the edible markers from Debbie. And I think it's six cello sheets. And you'll get one of Pepsi Cakes highlighter, bling highlighter dusts. Um, it'll either be rose gold or silver. Um, these are, if you haven't used these before, they're beautiful. Pepsi has great colors. I love them. They're just gorgeous. Um, and they, I use them a lot on a lot of my edible work. And I, look how sparkly it is. It's so sparkly. I love bling. Anyway, so what you will need to start out with this is your kit from Debbie. Or if you have these at home, you just need these a few cello sheets and the cello sheets, if you don't know what they are, most of us, I think most of you on here have used them, but in case you haven't, they are basically an edible, it's almost edible cellophane. So as you can see, it's kind of like a, it, it slightly looks like plastic, but it isn't, it's totally edible. Um, it comes on an acetate backing and my climate is so dry here that it peels off right now. If there's humidity in the air, however, it doesn't peel off and you actually have to use an X-Acto knife to score the edge of your cello sheet. And then what I do is I just flip the cello sheet over and peel it. I'm trying to get a hold of it here. Sometimes it's hard to get a hold of it off the mats when I have my gloves on. So, and this one, as you can see, it's like, it's broken off because that's how dry it is in my climate right now so what i do is i just flip it over once i figure out which side is actually the solo sheet and the way to do that is just to dip your finger in a little bit of water and touch both sides of the acetate and the cello and see which one is sticky and that will tell you the sticky side is the cello sheet so again you just take, make a little score mark and kind of peel the cello back just like this away from your score mark and then i pull the sheet off the acetate sheet off gently so you don't crack it or bend it or whatever and then the cello sheet is free free and clear of the acetate now i always keep of course there is a little piece that's stuck there that's okay um i always keep my acetate sheets because i can use them for other things and i'll show you one thing that we'll use them for is that's the second technique but i'll be doing it on the acetate sheet that's left over okay so the other thing you'll need is i'm just going to move my cello aside here and where it's clear it's really hard to see sometimes so just keep an eye on where it is you need a little bit of water so just clear water hi jesse ann hi Catherine. what's the difference between cello and semi-transfer semi-transfer is one that you can print on and then you can pour um isomalt on it and it will pull the image off onto your isomalt or I know Brooke did a live with it where she can put it on chocolate and then it'll pull the image off the transfer. So it's actually, and that's why they're called semi-transfer sheets because it's actually transferring your graphic onto whatever it is that you want it to be put on. So whether it's a sucker or um, a chocolate bar or something like that. So that is what the difference is. This one, you can still print on it, but it doesn't transfer. It actually has to be incorporated into the sugar piece itself or pour ice malt over it so it actually will blend into the sugar piece that's how this one's used um but there's so many uses for it and i'm i'm having fun playing with it to figure out new uses and fun things to do with it so okay um i'm just gonna oh i gotta get that piece off there because it's getting in my way get out of my way all right so then the other thing you need is something silicone, like a silicone mat of some kind that's flat. You don't want anything that has like, this is actually um, a lace mat, but you don't want to use the lace side. You want to use the back side. The back side is good. Or if you want your petals to have some veining in them, you can use a veining mat. So this one is a Wilton mat that I've had for years and years, and you can build your petals up right on top of this and it will give some of those lines of the veins that you'd like to see in your flower okay so let's get started oh and the other thing you'll need and this also comes in your kit is little honey's glue fyi and that's what we'll use to glue the flower together at the end okay um one thing is that i will warn you 
this does this is not instant gratification um you have to let the cello dry fully before you can actually assemble your flower but don't worry it's it once it gets dry it's so beautiful that it's worth the wait trust me oh your laptop decided to update <laughs> okay so i thought i had a pair of scissors right here i have no scissors okay just a second so even though it's drying here that doesn't want to break but i wanted to break so just hang on one split second until i find a pair of scissors oh scissors where are you oh they're there okay so i'm just going to take a piece of my cello i hope you guys can see that because it's so thin and clear that it's really hard to see it and i'm just randomly going to cut pieces nothing you can see it broke there um it doesn't have to be perfect it's just little pieces okay just like that then i'm going to take oh let's see what color should i do I think some of my pens are still in my travel bag from Austin. <laughs> I think I'll do orange and we'll do red. That'll be kind of pretty. Okay. So I'm just taking two of my edible pens. Oh, is that orange? Yes, it is orange. Okay. Taking two of my edible pens and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to scribble anywhere just randomly onto the cello just very random and don't worry if it breaks it doesn't matter if a little piece snaps off don't throw it away save it because you can use it on top of your puddle you can still incorporate it okay so there's just very random i hope you can see that let me know if you can see that the color on it it's hard to tell here if you can uh hi rebecca okay so i've got the orange on and i'm just going to take just because i want to i'm just going to put a little bit of red on it so i'm just going to again just scribbling wherever i feel like i want some color just anywhere any any little bits of places that look like they might need a little snap of color because in the end that isn't going to matter and you'll see why in just a minute okay so are you with me perfect hi marcia so now here's where the water comes in so i'm going to do it without the veiner this time so i'm just going to take this and dip it into my water and you see what's happening already and you kind of have to work quickly because cello gets goopy and slimy okay so it's starting to get slimy right here you can see it right there so you want to put it down pretty quickly okay i'll just set this aside so you can get a look at that now all of those colors are starting to blend together like a watercolor can you see that carol can you see that because my video seems to be really grainy oh, grainy as well. ah. I don't know why that video seems to be really good. I don't know why I'm getting feedback. That was weird. Anyway, okay, showing up great. Perfect. All right. So from here, sometimes what I'll do, I don't know why I'm getting feedback. I hear something. I don't know why. Um, okay. So sometimes from here, I'll just move the cello into a bit of a petal shape at this point, just the edges, just push them around where I want them. Lori, I'm getting feedback for some reason. I don't know why. It might be from Debbie. I don't know. <laughs> Debbie, are you there? I am, but I muted myself because you said that. Oh, can you hear me? No, I, I can hear you. <laughs> Hello. Sorry. Hello. Big reboot. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm gonna let that one sit. But then what you do, because only doing one coat of this just isn't quite enough. You have to have a few coats in order to make it substantial enough to actually be able to peel it off of this 
and have something that you can manipulate as a petal. So I'm going to take my colors again and always make sure you close these so they don't dry out on you because that sucks when that happens. It's happened to me before because I'm a bit of a squirrel and forget and walk away and <laughs> try my dry my little markers out. So, and you don't have to color every single piece of cello that you put on your petal. Keep that in mind. Just, just enough to get some color going through it. If you want it really a deep color, then you can color it more or whatever you'd like. Okay. Hi, Jackie. So there we go. So I've got a little bit on there and then I'm going to dip it in the water again. Let me slide this out of the way. Whoops, it's getting stuck to me. So I'm dipping in the water again and it immediately starts to look like watercolor just because all of the marker starts to bleed together, all those colors. And then you just lay it down on top of the last one. Let it sit there for a couple of minutes and you'll see some really cool things happen. It kind of sucks into each other. It's the coolest thing. I love it. I love that effect. And then I'm just going to pull that piece down because I, again, I'm trying to keep that petal shape to some degree. And you can make these as big or as little as you want. There's another piece. I'm just going to fold it in. So, so Heather... Now Yep. Um, Catherine Don Donner had a question. I don't know if it was answered because I wasn't on. Okay. But she said, what is the difference between cello sheets and semi-transfer sheets? Oh, I did answer that one. I did. Okay, answer. good. I Just did pass sure. that one. Yeah, I got it. Did. did she answer <laughs> it okay, Catherine? You know, she's a squirrel, so she gets lost sometimes. <laughs> I am a squirrel. It happens. Squirrel. Totally. So one thing you can do, if you get a lot of excess water, you can just pick it up with your brush and get rid of it. Or you can take a piece of paper towel, which I didn't bring any in with me, and just dab that off because you don't want any of this stuff, like just to clean up your edges and keep it nice and tidy. So now I'm just going to put on clear. Get my scissors again. And the other thing you'll note is as soon as you touch the cello sheet with your wet fingers, you're going to stick to it. So just keep that in mind. So I'll dip into my water with my clear piece that I'm not putting a color on and just lay it over again. And I'm going to do a couple of layers of that. Just to make it thick enough so once it's dry, it actually has some substance. Although it's still very thin and looks fragile, it gives it some strength. Okay, I'll grab my brush and clean up some of that water. See, this is what I don't want because if you have that water on the edge, then it kind of bleeds the, the cello out to the edge and out past your edge that you want. So just clean it up a little bit with, like I said, a brush or a piece of paper towel. Okay. And from here, I'm going to hold it up so you can see it a little better. There's some bubbles that are forming in there and the beautiful bleed of all those colors together. It's just so pretty. So what I'll do now is I'm going to put it in my dehydrator. And can you pull it before you put it in there? Can you pull that a little closer to you? To me, yep. it's yeah, right there. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, okay. So sure. So I'm going to put it in my dehydrator and it takes about, I'm going to say around 20 minutes at, I think it's 155 that I put it in or 159 uh, degrees Fahrenheit and just let it go. And then you can keep checking it every 10 minutes or so just to make sure that it's not completely brittle because you don't want it brittle. You want to be able to peel it off and have a little bit of give left in that petal to manipulate the shape. Okay. So I'm going to pop that into my dehydrator. Pop, pop. Turn it on. It's 158 degrees Fahrenheit, just so you know, and then turn it on and we'll let it go. And we'll move on to, I'll show you how to do the one with the veiner. So here's the veiner. 
make sure I'm in the right spot. Do you have a drink of water? Um, in a regular oven, just put it at the lowest temperature possible, I think, in your regular oven, Jesse, because it's not it's around 170, isn't it? Is that right? I think that's right. Um, so just at the lowest possible temperature and keep checking it. I would check it in the oven every five minutes just to make sure that it doesn't get too crispy. And you can also let this air dry. If you don't have a dehydrator and you're using your oven for something else, you can also let it air dry. Just know that it's gonna take a little bit longer. So I'm gonna actually make these ones a bit smaller because the point, the middle of this pad a little shorter than what I was making before. Oh, see, there's little pieces. Oh, tiny pieces. Get back here. So I'm just going to cut it a bit smaller. Oops, broke another piece. And don't worry, if you break it, break little pieces off, you can still use them. So this one, I think I'll just do with orange. Oops, and I broke it again. Hey, Heather. Yeah. Um, how many total layers was that? Stacy wants to know. Um, that one that I just put in was four. You can do more layers. It just depends on your personal preference for how thick you want them to be. Mm -hmm. um, the thinner that they are, the more movement you can get on them, the thicker, the stronger they are. So that's, it's just your personal preference on what you're using them for. Um, like on my my little top hat cookie i think that one i used five layers of the cello just to make sure it was going to make it there and not bust all to crap before i got to to texas <laughs> in my carry-on <laughs> yeah carol fisher said that she had found that it uh found if you um have halogen lights they are great uh, at drying out the cello sheets or the oh, flex cool. cello and flex fall sheets. That's cool. Okay. So I have one layer down and I, I noticed that this little corner isn't quite wet enough. So I'm just taking my brush and adding a little bit of water to it to wet it down. So it sticks to itself and then take that excess away as best as possible on the mats. These mats, I find it's a little harder to get the water off, but if you have paper towel, you can just dab it off. That'll work. Um, and then I'll show you the other way, the one of the other ways that you can control the amount of water you're using a bit better. And it's just simple. I'll just get another piece here of cello and get some more color on here. There we go. And sticking to it so you can actually just take your paintbrush and dab some water on there you don't want to brush back and forth because it's actually going to blend out your colors too much because you still want that watercolor kind of look so it looks natural like a nice natural bleed on the the petal so just get some water on it dab away and then flip it over and you have to do the back side as well to make sure it's saturated enough. And then I find dipping it easier, but some people will probably find it easier to do it with a brush. And then lay it down and see, it's still not quite as wet as that first layer. So just take your brush with water and press those pieces in where you want them for your petal in that shape. So just press them around, in and around. I love the look of that. Those are flowers I think we used to make as kids. I, I don't know the names of them, but they had that cellophane-y look to them. Um, oh, really? Me yeah, I don't know what they're called, though. I don't remember, unfortunately, but I can visualize them. Oh, that's cool. I don't know if anybody else knows. I don't know. But, I mean, I just love how the cello acts with the color in it i mean it, and with the water it just gives that it's such an interesting texture that comes out of that 
and the bubbles. I, I love the bubbles. You can pop the bubbles if you want, but I think the bubbles are fantastic for texture. <laughs> In my own I opinion. agree. It looks like glitter. It does. It's so pretty. And the more I find the more texture that comes on the petal, the more it shows up when it's dry. Once you put the um, the highlighter bling on it from Pepsi, it just pops all of those beautiful textures. So now I've got my enough color on there. So now I'm just going to dip another piece. So this is layer number three. And it's a bit of a bigger layer. So again, I'm just going to take my brush and fold all that in. And you see how quickly it gets gooey, but you can still manipulate it to get it where you want it. Not with your fingers though. It'll just stick to your fingers. <laughs> so just lay it all in there and I'm going to put one more on. If I can get a hold of it. Okay. Ah, let go. Oh, now I can't see it. Oh, there we go. Okay, one more layer of clear. And uh, Stacy got it. Shrinky dinks. Oh, yes, that's right. I do remember doing those. And yeah, it does kind of have that look to it. For sure. And then and I mean, wasn't there like a gummy type thing that we used to eat um, that was like that too? I Not the remember. fruit roll-ups, but something else. A gummy type thing. Somebody will get it. Probably Stacy, because he remembers everything. He remembers everything. I don't remember that stuff. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I remember visions. It's scary. I remember My Little Ponies. That's what I remember. Well, that's because you look like My Little to Pony with your hair. I love My Little Ponies. Okay, so I here, know. I hope away you from you. bubbling that's in that. It is so cool. Pull it, push it away from you now. Okay. There we go. There you go. Now kind of um, angle it like, turn, there you go. When you move it a little bit, people can see the different sides of it. Incredible so there's lots edibles. of bubbles in this one. It's so pretty. Okay. So I'm going to put that one in the dehydrator and I'll check the other one. So this one, it's not quite ready yet. I can manipulate it a little bit more on the edges now because it's starting to quote unquote crust or dry. Um, if you don't like the shape of the petal, this is where you can manipulate the shape and position it better, shape it better than the way you had it before if you don't like the way it was. But don't dive into the middle. The middle is definitely not dry. All right. Catherine Donner said, incredible edibles. I just remember you peeled them off the backing and then ate them and they were like gummies. And it wasn't fruit, fruit roll-ups. It was different. Yeah, because um, I only remember fruit roll-ups with that. I don't know. Yeah, because you're young, just like uh, Carol just said. You're so young. Um, <laughs> Becky Norton says, uh, looks like dew drops. And Carol Ann said you would put the shrinky dinks in the oven to shrink what you're making. Yeah, that's the way shrinky dinks worked. Fruit by the foot. Nope, that's not it. I still eat those once in a while. It was before the, it was before the fruit by the foot and the fruit roll-ups. It was before that. Oh. I don't know. Okay. So it was made from apricot. Yes, that's what it was, Jackie Race. I knew I'm not going nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I remember. Okay, so I'll show you somebody will get it. Oh. I'll show you, this is the flower that I did for my top hat cookie for that takes the cake, um, Julia Usher's cookie competition. This is, it's a three dimensional cookie, um, but there's the cello flower. It did get a little smooshed on the way home, but it didn't break. Look at that, it didn't break at all. Look how strong it is. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing is once it's dry like this, you can just add a little bit of a spritz of water or a little paper potion if you want to and let it set in. And then you can manipulate those petals again to bring them back out, which I haven't done yet, but I plan to because it was more flower shaped mm -hmm. when we were in Texas. So it had more movement and curl to it. It was beautiful. But, you know, 
traveling across the country into another country. It's gorgeous. I love the look of that. Um, and the judges, even before every, anything was really announced, they were coming over saying, we saw a flower out there. And yeah, so they're asking us about it. So they, you wowed those judges. Well, that's cool. I'm glad. I didn't win anything with this cookie, but it was so cute. And I love my flower. It was awesome. Well, you got the attention of those judges, that's for sure. Well, that was cool. That was fun. I had fun. It was good. Okay, so now once the petals are dry, I'm trying to find one that is singular. Okay, here it is. So once it's dry, I peel it off and I don't know if you can see it. It looks closer to you. Move it closer close to, to you. There you go. Okay. Yep, perfect centered. So it looks kind of like plasticky on the back kind of like those shrinky dinks but on the front side it has all that beautiful texture that it makes it look like it is a fantasy flower but it makes it look like it could possibly be real you know it has that real feel to it in the look of it so what i did with this one i'll show you on i guess i'll do it on these ones um I took so pretty. some of Pepsi Cakes highlighter, bling highlighter dust. And I'm going to get this. And this is why I keep all my acetate because then I can control where all the dust goes <laughs> or at least try to. <laughs> so I'm just going to take my bling highlighter dust and open it up. You can get that dust on the Icing Images website. I will put the link there for you in just one second. Yes, it's right on the website. And they're beautiful and you will love them and they go a very long way. I've had these for a long time. So then I don't dust the back of it with this color. I dust the front of it. This is the front to me. So the back is that shiny part. I want to do the outside edge and the front of it. So I just take that bling highlighter and just start laying it on. And you can do it as heavily or as lightly as you'd like. Because again, it's all personal preference on how you want your flower to look. But this just adds so much more zing to them. They're so pretty. And if I'm you putting up to, things, guys, for you. Sorry. That's okay. If you wanted to, you could paint a little bit in here to add more detail on these veins. I, I like it personally just this way, um, but you could if you wanted to, or you can just add a darker color of dust into the, the middle of the flower to pull it out. Um, it's just, again, whatever, you, whatever you'd whatever you like to do, but that gives it that nice shimmer. I don't know if you can see that on there or not. Oh yeah, that so is beautiful. so pretty. It's just beautiful. So then on the back side to really accentuate that color, now I have I have some of Pepsi Cake silver in here. Uh, where is my bottle? So I can show it to you. Here's Pepsi Cake silver highlighter, and I keep it in this so I can paint with it sometimes. So I just let it air dry because I usually use water with it or lemon extract, and then I'm not wasting any of it because nobody wants to waste stuff, especially this stuff because it's so amazing. So I'll just it set looks this up to me. Here. When you held that one up, it looks like part of a butterfly wing. And it could be. It definitely could be. Or it could be even a heart. Like this way, you could piece them together as a heart. They'd be really pretty, like stuck in the side of a cake, going up the sides of the cake. Um, it feels kind of like the texture of it when I'm holding it in my hand. It feels kind of like rice paper, like a rice paper sail or the thickness of it. Um, but it's just so much to me, it's so much more beautiful than rice paper. So then on the back side, what I do is take a little bit of this silver and brush that on. And that reflects the light and just makes everything look even more sparkly. And you can put as much or as little on as you want. So there is the cute little petals. They're adorable. I love them. So now this one is really dry. So what I can do, 
and I, I should have done this before I dusted it, but I'll show you now. Um, take a little bit of paper potion. This is not in your kit. You'd have to buy this separately. Um, just take a little bit of paper potion, squirt it on the back side of your petals and just let them set. And within probably, I'm going to say about 15 minutes, that paper potion will set into these and you'll be able to move them and bend them and manipulate them into a shape that you want. Cause these ones kind of flattened out with me. I had taken these to uh, Texas too, and they flattened out and travel. This one still has a little bit of movement to it, but they're so pretty. I just love them. I love them. I love they're my little gorgeous. petals. And the other thing is, this is the other thing. I left this on here so I could show you. Um, if you have a piece that juts out like this and you don't like it, you can just trim it off and just save that piece for later to make another one. These would make great um, fish tails, mermaid tails, you know, anything like that. They're so beautiful. Um, so yeah, I'm just, I keep trying to, I want to bend it, but it's not letting me. It's just going to snap if I try to bend it because it's too dry. Um, let's see. Let's see if this one has given me any. Nope. So it needs a little bit longer to just sit so I can manipulate it. But that gives you an idea of what to do if they dry out on you. Just add a little bit of moisture and then you can manipulate them back into the shape. So it's pretty cool. So once your flower is done... Stacy said um, he was impressed that it didn't shatter when you cut it. And Marilyn O'Neill says, oh, pretty. Do they <laughs> take on moisture over time? Looks like a good alternative to glucose baked bubble sugar for higher humidity. Right. Um, one thing I noticed when it was in Texas, it was fine inside. It, it held its shape. It didn't get too pliable. Um, I mean, I could still bend it a little like I can right now, um, but I couldn't really manipulate it. But then I left it out on the porch when we were, I don't, were we in, yeah, we were in Austin at whatever house we were staying at. And I had left it out on the porch when we were getting ready to leave for San Antonio. And it was humid out that day. So it actually took on the humidity and I was able to manipulate it again. So it had been gone from this form to a more pliable form. So I just snapped that one. Oops. There's a, <laughs> that was a styrofoam ball from when I took it to Dallas. <laughs> anyway, so it will, in a humid space, it will take on the humidity, but it won't melt. It'll hold its shape. It'll just be that you can manipulate it and bend it or whatever, you know? So it's, it's really quite cool how versatile it, it can be. Um, yeah, I just snapped that one, <laughs> trying to bend it. So to put the flower together, what I did, and I'm just gonna actually show you by gluing this one back together. I just put a little daub of the little honey's glue and then just press it into place and hold it for a couple of seconds until it actually adheres to each other each petal because this is actually two petals together that are already glued and then i can take this one and i'm not liking this bottom piece i'm actually going to trim that piece off just get it over here so it's probably going to shoot across my table but whatever i keep seeing butterfly wings Oh, totally. Or fairy wings or anything. I mean, it's just so, yep, it did shoot right across my table. <laughs> um, whoops, there's another piece. So again, don't throw those away. Keep them because you can still use them to make more petals or butterfly wings or leaves, whatever you want to make. Um, so this one actually could easily be a butterfly by putting it together like this. So I think that's what I'll do. I'll just add some little honeys and then stick those pieces together so they attach. And then what you would do from here is sit it so that it has it, you're forcing it to have movement as it dries. So you could take 
a scribe and slide it underneath the one wing, one set of wings, and then you could take a paintbrush and set it under the other set of wings. And then you have movement because you've got this shape, then it's drying in this shape, I should say. Isn't that cute? It's so cute. So yeah, so that is how to do those. I'm going to check my, I'm hoping that the ones that are in, I'm actually going to set this off to the side. I'm hoping the ones that are in the dehydrator are drying enough that I can show you how to check them, see if they're done. Okay, this one, can you see the, it's kind of, when I do this, it wrinkles. Yeah, it can cause another effect too, which we met, somebody may, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, and it can. It definitely can, but that's just telling you it is not completely dry. Um, what you can do is take a tool and just lift up on that edge just to see how it's doing. And it is still quite gummy underneath, so it's not ready to peel. But you'll know when it's ready to peel because when you lift it up, this piece is going to just kind of flake up and you can gently peel it off. If the middle isn't completely dry, it's okay because that gives you room to play with it and add that movement in whatever you want it to be. And that's very to similar to flex cuddle. frost. Yeah. That's yeah. what you're describing is so similar. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So that is, that's how this works too. But again, that's when you do this, you know, it's not dry when you can see the wrinkle effect, you know, it's not quite dry. Okay. And so you just pop it back in the dehydrator or in the oven and let it go a little longer. So how much time do we have Debbie? Um, we have another like 15 minutes, but we have a question from okay. Lisa. She okay. says, can you put that directly onto buttercream or is it necessary to wire it? Um, I think you could put it on buttercream. I haven't tried it that way, but. You I, should be able to because. I can't see it being a problem. Yeah, because Jesse and Riley put it straight on, but seller sheet straight yes. on buttercream. It was beautiful. That's right. That's right. And because it's so thick compared to what it started out as, as just the thin sheets because there's layers of it i don't think the buttercream will affect it at all no i don't think it will either no i don't think it carol, will. carol carol says she can see cello and isomalt petals together that would be really cool yeah it would be and actually i can show you a petal oh wait no i didn't do it i do have i had one but it's not done with these ones not the same way so I won't show it to you because it's not quite the same, not quite the same technique. But anyway, um, okay. Well, I can see it and I can't pick it up. <laughs> Come here. Get off of there. Okay, there's one piece. Here's another piece. Okay, so this, now I'm going to show you the other technique. So this is the second new technique that Debbie had advertised about. It's awesome! And this is going to save people a lot of money. <laughs> a lot of it's money. It's very similar to another technique, it so, but it gives a different like look to it. It gives a different look, but it also is using a different product than the yes. other one. So that's that's the difference. So what? And it's really cool. It's it's really cool. So it's the same kind of concept. I take a piece of cello dip it in water, get it good and saturated, and then lay it down on something like a silicone mat or whatever. But I would prefer in my, what I've tried anyway, to not put it down on mats like this, the perforated mats or the baking mats, um, put it down on something like this or a silicone mat. The reason is it will get stuck a lot easier onto this than it will onto this. It'll peel off quite easy. What about your acetate sheet? Will it work on that? Oh yes, that's actually what I meant to put it on was the acetate. So I'll do it on both. <laughs> okay. Squirrel. Squirrel. That's what I remember you doing. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did it on the acetate. So I'll do it on this one and then I'll do it on the other one. So take, whoops. I'm gonna take a little bit more here and dip it. Get it good and saturated. Just kerplunk it. Oh, I lost a piece in there. Come back. No, I hate it when that happens. It sunk to the bottom and stuck to the dish. <laughs> oh, well. There. So I've got 
a good amount there. I'm going to let it set in to itself so it gets good and gooey. And while that's doing that, I'll take my acetate and do my acetate one. Okay. Move these. There we go. Hi, Carol. Carol's leaving us? Yes. Carol. Love you, Carol. Love you, Carol. Bye. Catch it on the replay. I'll go. I think you saw this at the show. At the show. She might have. This so is why you want to come to our booth on shows. We experiment. Then this, this was kind of a happy accident is what happened that I yes. discovered this one. So I'm just dipping it in the water, laying it down, just like the other. And I'm going to get another piece here. Okay. Whoops. So get it nice and saturated and lay it on top. Okay, so that one I'm going to let sit in because this one over here is probably ready to work with. Okay. So here Guess we what? have... What? Pepsi's in the house! Hi, Pepsi! <laughs> so here we go with... Oh, Carol was saying goodbye to the cello piece at the bottom of the cup. Oh, she's not, <laughs> she's not leaving. Yay, she didn't leave! Okay, so... I'm going to do this with, let's see, I'll do gold on this one. Again with Pepsi Cakes Bling Highlighter. Woohoo! That's Pepsi's, that Pepsi Garcia lady that we just saw on there. That's her stuff. We sell yep. it. It's amazing. It's very beautiful. Okay, so I'm not shy with this when I put it on here. Are you ever shy with anything? No. Never. Okay. So and it's just, wet right now, right? This is wet. And I'm just tapping this on. Just giving a little tap or any tappy tap. Pepsi says she loves, love, love your work. Thank you. So like I, I am loading it on like, and when I say loading it, you still have tons of Pepsi cake bling highlighter in there. Like it goes so far. It's great stuff. I know, but I don't I care first... that I'm missing some spots. That's okay. doesn't matter that we're missing some spots. I know when I first saw her little, the little container, I was like, that's it. Um, and then we realized how far it goes. Yeah, that's it. It's a oh, lot. Yeah. We don't realize it, but it's a lot in there. It, it is a lot it in here. such a long way. And the quality well, is I've had, I've had these for like six months and I use them all the time. And I've hardly made a dent in them. Like hardly at all. It's great. It's great stuff. Okay. So now that I've got that there, I'm going to take a scraper and I'm just going to scrape it together just like this. Scrape or no scraping. So I'm actually pulling it right off onto my scraper and smooshing it back down. So pull Smoosh. it off and smoosh it. Look at that color. Look at it. Ah! It's gorgeous. So then the beauty of this little technique is we're making gold foil. So see all of this, all that thin stuff that it looks like there's nothing there. There actually is gold there. You let it dry and all of this, like look how much that makes. That was just a tiny bit of cello, but it makes so much gold. So once it's dry, what I try to do is take these thicker spots off because I don't want it super thick. I know it looks like there's the nothing there. It does. It looks like there's absolutely nothing there. Well, there is. I saw her person. Mm -hmm. There really is. Yeah, you there's... can see it like that. That was yeah. good. So, and then look at all of that that's left. So that's you, a don't, lot. you don't throw that away. You just take another piece of acetate and spread it right on there. And you can do it. Some gold leaf is thicker than other gold leaf. Um, but again, it's just that personal preference, whatever you want to do. So you could start out with a thick base and peel it back here. And it's so thin back here. It'll be beautiful when it dries. It'll be nice and flowy. And basically, when this dries, it acts like true gold leaf. It, it looks like true gold leaf. It even flows like true gold leaf. Yeah, that's what so was it's, neat. It's so cool. 
So I'm just going to uh, say um, it out Caroline a Hughes. More. Carolyn Fuse, Carolyn Fuse, Carolyn Hughes says, "Press it in a mold." I wonder if you can do that as well. Um, I bet you could. I bet you could, but you'd have to leave it to dry for quite some time, right? Yeah, because it's watered down cello. Right, yes. and it is very watered down. Like this one is, I found, I probably put more water on this than I did on the petals, um, just so I could spread it easily. So there's a nice good. That's a good shot of how thin that is because you can see through it in most places but it'll, it's going to make beautiful gold leaf absolutely gorgeous wow okay now Irenia did this with wafer paper so if you don't have cello right. you can do it with the wafer paper as well it's just sometimes you have what you have you know yes. but yeah yeah that's right um i gotta grab another brush because i just realized i Totally get that one bunged up with. Oh, cool. Cat Catherine Donner asked a question. When it dries, does it pull off of the acetate as a sheet or does it come off in pieces? It comes off, honestly, as a sheet. Like this will come off as a sheet. Um, no, but you can rip it into pieces. Like this one won't come off as a sheet just because of how I put it on there. It, I can peel pieces off. So, but that's what gives it that, the beauty of it, because it looks so much like true gold leaf. So on this one, I'm going to do rose gold. Can you see that one, Debbie? Or am, am I too yeah, far away? Can you move it, yeah, move it a little bit away from you. Okay. Your mat. Okay, I'm just going to set that one aside. Pepsi wants to know if you can dehydrate it to rush the process. Yeah, you sure can. And mm -hmm. this one, this doesn't take as long as the petals to dry. And a dehydrator will work. Or if you're putting it in the oven, I wouldn't put it necessarily on the acetate. I would put it on silicone. Actually, metal. the acetate, our acetate will hold up to that. Oh, it will? See, I wasn't yep. sure. So I thought, oh, I don't know if it would. But if it does, sweet. That, that's you can pour ice mold on it, remember? Oh, yeah, that's true. Duh. Mm -hmm. All right, we have a lot of comments. Um, so Pepsi says, can you dehydrate it to rush the process? I, I asked that. Yep. Jesse said, you can leave it on the acetate and wet it and do the same technique. And when when dry, it comes off. I think that's what we're doing. Am I, unless I'm misunderstanding, um, I which know. is very easy in my head. Carol Fisher says, as long as you have a thin, even spread of cello, it will come off, I think is what she's saying. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it'll come off. It won't Stacey, get stuck on there. Yeah, no, it comes off nicely. It comes off beautifully. Sort of like those apricot things we used to eat that peeled off the backing. Um, Stacy Barr said, <laughs> I wonder if you could take the silicone matte version and press the gold leaf onto the side of the cake. Oh, I wonder. I don't know. You probably have to peel it first, then put it back on the sheet, and then put it on the cake. You know what I mean? Yeah, probably. Like, so it's released first. And see, Here. the reason I'm doing this this way, I should have said that, is, and not just leaving it, because I could have spread the uh, the cello sheet out first before I put the gold on it. Uh -huh. But what I wanted to do is mix the gold into the cello. So it's fully gold. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. So there's no need to go back after it's dry and do the back of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's and already mixed. Carol Ann said flower it molds. Very true. Yeah. And St Carol said, oh, Stacy Barr, I see you demoing that. I see <laughs> Stacy Barr taking sheets of that and using his electronic cutter. Um with it as well like you create it oh, let yeah. it dry and then cut it yeah so there you have it that is that's all there is to it and just let it dry and as soon as it's dry it is beautiful 